when when you look at all of this dr shrinath and you see this entire concept because we have blood banks and people know what happens but when it comes to breast milk how is the freshness of breast milk maintained in such a way and in how many hours should it all be distributed so that the baby the preterm baby who which needs it gets it on time okay so the how how does this uh, donor milk uh, work is a mother who is breastfeeding her own baby have excess milk yes presses the ba- uh, milk and she can actually uh, keep this milk in the refrigerator for up to 24 hours yes yeah, they extract it yeah they, they express it and keep it some mothers either the hand express or express using yeah. the breast and then they can keep it in the refrigerator for 24 hours once they keep filling the bottle once the 24 hours are over she can actually preserve this in the deep freezer and minus 20 degrees and the back of the freezer that will retain most of the properties and uh, we once uh, a few bottles are collected then we go and receive the milk from the mother oh okay and uh, when we started in 2018 2017 and uh, we wanted to make it so easy for them to donate so that uh, we go home and then collect it from their doorstep so that we don't give an extra hassle of them traveling in bangalore traffic and coming to the milk bank and donate this we started even before actually swiggy and zomato were actually uh, in full bloom and uh, so we had a, a collection and delivery system where we go and collect the milk and once this freezer milk is coming to us to the uh, milk bank we store it in the freezer and when we have to uh, then we have to pasteurize this milk because it's a, another mother's milk yeah. we have to pasteurize it and first screen the mother for any infections we do a blood screening for the mothers and once that is clear then we thaw this milk overnight in the fridge and when when it becomes liquid then we mix it under the laminar flow and under sterile conditions then we pasteurize this milk once the pasteurize is done we take a sample to check that there is no growth in the in the in the milk only when that is uh, no growth is there then that milk is fit for to be dispensed to other nicus where the preterm babies are it will retain most of the properties except for few cellular properties and a uh, uh, few micronutrients but it serves the purpose of uh, helping the uh, the baby to get adjusted to the milk because ma- major challenge for these premature babies is feed intolerance and these babies gut uh, the digestive system is underdeveloped and when we start feeding these babies these babies do not tolerate the feeds well so that is why mother's milk and if in the absence of mother's milk don't is very important and if these babies are given a formula then there's a high risk of these babies developing a severe gut inflammation or infection and they may even die so the the donor milk definitely serves the purpose whenever the mother's milk is not there for the babies in the first few days of life this is so beautiful this is so beautiful and uh, even i think a little less of those micronutrients still would be better than a formula for a baby that needs uh, breast milk fed to him or her so this is such human service and uh, after that awareness walk how are you feeling after the walkathon was such a big hit and the press covered it social media spoke about it do you feel awareness about this milk bank is there a one place or does most hospitals have a milk bank for this is there one place that does this in bangalore or all hospitals no. are equipped bangalore currently we have three milk banks the one i set up uh, in 2017 that is amara that is in fortislafm and there is one 
in Rangodurai Hospital, which, uh, which was launched a few months back. And the third one is the Adya Public Human Milk Bank, which we launched recently with the help of Rotary, that is in Gunashila Hospital. And uh, there are uh, other milk banks, uh, like one in Mangalore, uh, which I helped recently to set up one in, uh, that's also a Rotary project, that was set up in uh, Lady Koshin Hospital in Mangalore. And there is uh, one in uh, uh, Gulbaga. So there are five. But I am mentoring uh, one more project in Darwad, which is going to come up uh, shortly. That's also a Rotary project. When I did this walkathon, I didn't want this walkathon to be just restricted to Adja Public Human Milk Bank, which I have established recently. I just wanted this movement so that public are generally aware of the milk banks and come forward and donate wherever they are. If they're in Mangalore, they can donate to <clears throat> a Mangalore Milk Bank. If they're in Gulbarga, they can donate to Gulbarga. And if they're in Bangalore, they can choose which milk bank they can donate. My objective was very pretty clear. So we just need to <clears throat> make sure that the public are made aware that their milk, um, the, uh, the especially the mothers, so their excess milk can save the tiny premature babies and uh, they can feel immensely satisfied with that. Because I have, have conducted a few uh, workshops where I invited both donor mothers and recipient mothers to those workshops. And donor mothers feel really satisfying when they hear the stories of these premature babies surviving on their milk. And uh, the recipient mothers thanking the donor mothers. And that is a really sight to see, okay? So, it, it gives many our mothers opportunity for them to save other mothers' babies. And they can really feel satisfied with that. Yeah, it's, it's actually, as you're describing it also, it seems like a very beautiful conversation with so much of gratitude on either side that one could be uh, useful for somebody else and the other one completely grateful for saving the child. Yes. Uh, and the... The beauty of it all, I think, is the human spirit that binds it all. The mother willing to share and the other mother so thankful for getting it. 